Hey everybody, Catherine here. I hope you are all having a fantastic holiday season so far, enjoying time with family and friends. I am currently taking a little break from the road myself to enjoy the holidays with my family. I cannot believe the end of the year is almost here. This has been such a wild year. 2019 will definitely go down in the books as one of the most amazing years in my life. I'll elaborate a little bit more on that in another video. Today's video is actually going to be part of a two-part series. In part one, I am going to go over my top five backcountry campsites for the year 2019. That means that these are campsites that I backpacked into on foot. Part two will cover my top five car camping slash boondocking sites for 2019. And these are mostly free sites that I camped at in my rig. Before we jump into the list, I just want to make note that I'm shooting on my Sony a6400 with one of my Canon lenses, my Canon uh, 17 to 40 millimeter lens with an adapter. My Sony lens took a hit in Canada and I have been having focusing issues ever since. So I did take this opportunity to send it into Sony and have it repaired. I'm using this adapter for the first time and hopefully it's working okay. I noticed it wasn't grabbing focus so I manually focused the shot. So hopefully it's looking okay. Also the lighting is not the greatest. It is overcast and starting to rain outside. We've had quite a bit of rain and even snow in the lower elevations. Winter is coming. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the list. I'm going to start with number five and work my way up to number one. Number five on the list is our third night camp in the Alpine Lakes wilderness. This was in Washington State, and it was a trip I did with Joey Coconado and Jarl Anastad, and most of the trip took place on the Pacific Crest Trail. The camp didn't have a name, but what I loved most about it was it was an alpine camp. That day, we climbed. We climbed, I would say, just under 3,000 feet to get to this campsite. It was gorgeous, however. We caught this area right during the bloom of wildflowers and we had stunning views of all the peaks around us. It was absolutely incredible. And even though the Washington mountains are not that high elevation wise in comparison to the Sierra, this was probably the most alpine camp I have ever camped at. After scouting several different spots, we decided on a spot next to a little tarn and we had just absolutely stunning views of mountain peaks all around us. There were some ominous clouds when we arrived and it did start to rain shortly after dinner. And unfortunately, the mosquitoes up there were horrible that time of year. It was July 4th weekend and the mosquitoes were just relentless. However, that did not take away from the beauty of this spot. I fell asleep to the sounds of rain falling on my tent, which I always love. And as a matter of fact, I hear rain falling on my camper right now. And we woke up to sunshine and a beautiful day. Now our camp the night before was not too shabby. It was at a lake called Spectacle Lake. It was absolutely gorgeous and it was very crowded. I can definitely see why a lot of people visit that lake and I believe there's easy access, although we took a different trail in. I believe there's a pretty easy access trail to get in there. So that explains some of the crowds that we experienced. The entire hike was awesome and through a beautiful section of Washington. Several years ago, I wanted to through hike the PCT. I've since changed my mind and I would rather just explore lots of different areas rather than commit, you know, four or five months to one trail. I've hiked almost the entire section A of the PCT, which is down in Southern California. However, there are a couple sections I would love to hike and that would be through the Sierra in California and Washington, the Washington portion of the PCT, particularly through the Cascades. So who knows, maybe that'll happen down the road. Moving on to number four. Number four is Second Lake on the Big Pine Lakes Trail in the Eastern Sierra. This was a solo trip I did not too long ago, back in October. It was absolutely stunning. I caught it at exactly the perfect time to get the peak of fall color. I know that this trail is always beautiful, but I think it was off the charts beautiful because of the fall color. 
It was my first time backpacking this trail and when I arrived to Second Lake with the view of Temple Crag in front of me, I was pretty blown away. To me, it was classic Sierra, which almost seems unreal. If you've been following me for a long time, you know the Sierra has a big piece of my heart. It's where I did my first backpacking trips. It's in California. It's home to me. There are several lakes in this basin, and a few of them are glacially fed from the Palisades Glacier. I did not make it up to the glacier on this trip, but I do look forward to visiting it in the future. This is normally a very, very popular trail during high season, but because I waited until the fall, I saw only a few other backpackers out there. I'd wanted to backpack that trail for a long time, and I picked the right time to do it. Number three on the list is the Jacob Hamblin Arch in Coyote Gulch in the Escalante area of Utah. I camped here on my last backpacking trip, which you probably just recently watched. I was joined on this trip by Christine of This Girl Hikes, and I had warned her ahead of time that it was a very busy trail and we'd probably run into a lot of people. I was dead wrong though. Because we were so late in the season, we went in mid-November, we had this place to ourselves. We have arrived at the Jacob Hamblin Arch and there is no one here. That is unheard of. We have the whole place to ourselves. We are camping here for the night. I was absolutely shocked when we arrived to the Jacob Hamlin Arch and no one was there. I turned to Christine and said, we are camping here. I don't know that we will ever have an opportunity to have this place all to ourselves again. The arch itself is absolutely majestic. At the camp itself, you're surrounded by the tall canyon walls and it almost gives it a cavern effect. We even had an echo effect in there, which was pretty cool. Again, I got very lucky with the fall color and the fall color was just absolutely beautiful in there. We have a creek running through, so we had a water source right in front of us and it happened to be a full moon on the night that we camped there. Our first view of the moon was through the arch itself, which was just incredible. That camp was so good, we chose to make it our camp for two nights in a row. This was actually my second time visiting Coyote Gulch this year. I liked it so much, I wanted to go back and show Christine this area. I knew she would just love it. If you decide to go and you wanna camp at Jacob Hamlin Arch, I cannot guarantee you that you will have it all to yourselves like we did. And jumping to number two on the list, Escalante Beach in the Grand Canyon. This was my first backpacking trip of 2019 and what a doozy. <laughs> I was joined once again by my niece Christine of This Girl Hikes and this route was challenging. We took the Tanner Trail down to the Escalante route and then joined up with the Grand View Trail to hike out. I've hiked in the Grand Canyon twice now, uh, last year and this year, and those two trips are still my most challenging trips to date. I have no idea what the statistics are, but I think the majority of visitors that visit the Grand Canyon only see it from the rim. I believe the percentage is very low of people who actually hike down into the canyon. So in comparison, there are very few people that see the Grand Canyon the way we did. It's one of our natural wonders and I feel very lucky to have experienced it that way. We also happened to hit it on its 100th birthday being a national park. So let me tell you about the campsite. Although day four, which was our most challenging day, was still ahead of us, where we would have to climb the Papago Wall and also traverse the Papago Slide, which is a talus chute, which was just absolutely terrifying. Day three still had its challenges. We had to trek through probably 40 plus mile per hour winds most of the day. We were just being lambasted by wind. When we finally arrived at this absolutely beautiful campsite on Escalante Beach. We made it to Escalante Beach. That's where we're camping right there behind me. We were exhausted. From what I understand, this is another campsite that it is rare to find not occupied. We got lucky again, and once again, we've seen very few people on this hike. We had this little piece of white sandy beach right on the Colorado River all to ourselves. 
The downside was the wind did not stop. Unfortunately, because we were on a sandy beach, we were pelted with sand the entire night. Our tents were covered in sand, but yet again, it did not take away from the beauty. And when you get a little distance from the actual event, all you can do is laugh and just remember it fondly. It was just part of the adventure. One thing I'll say about the Grand Canyon is no photos or video really ever do it justice. You really have to see it for yourselves. It is awe-inspiring and it is jaw-dropping. There is absolutely a reason why it is one of our natural wonders. All right, here we go. My number one favorite backcountry campsite of 2019 is... Island Lake in the Wind River Range. In fact, I will be so bold as to say this was the most beautiful campsite I have ever camped at. It was my first time backpacking the Wind River Range. I was invited by Brian DeLay. I will link his channel below and I also want to give him a special thanks for allowing me to use some clips for this video. And also I want to thank Jarl Anastad for allowing me to use some clips for the Alpine Lakes Wilderness. Unfortunately my hard drive that contained those two trips uh, has some sort of issue with it and I'm not able to access them so I'm going to have to send it to a data recovery service. So thank Thanks guys for helping me get this video done. But let's get back to the wins. I feel like overall this year, I've just had great timing on these trips. Once again, great timing in the winds. We were treated to a wildflower feast. <laughs> The wildflowers were just going off. The views were incredible. The lakes were incredible. It was one of those trips I got emotional several times just because of the sheer beauty. I was just overcome with emotion because it was just so beautiful. And arriving at Island Lake was one of those moments. It was absolutely breathtaking. We were in the Titcom Basin area of the winds so we could actually see that range in view and the views all around were absolutely incredible. That particular trail is a very popular one as well and that lake is a very popular spot for camping. Again, my leg held out on that trip and we didn't have anybody right next to us. After waking up at camp at Island Lake, we day hiked into Ticcom Basin. That was absolutely mind blowing. I can't wait to get in there and explore that area more. But what was really the icing on the cake for this trip was on our way back from Ticcombe Basin, we ran into my friend Coach, whom I had gone on a backpacking trip in Yellowstone with the year before, randomly on the trail. Brian said hello to the hiker that was passing us and I heard that Southern accent say hello back and I knew right away it was Coach. Our original plan was to get back to camp, pack up, and hike to our last camp. It was only supposed to be a three-night trip, but after running into coach, we decided to go ahead and camp at Island Lake two nights, and I had no problem with that whatsoever. Honestly, I had wanted to stay another night, and it just worked out that way, so the universe was looking out for me and made it happen. We extended the trip, made it a four night, and spent the rest of the trip with Coach, and I would say that trip is probably the highlight of 2019, along with probably the Grand Canyon. Well, that is gonna do it, folks. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my top five backcountry campsites for 2019. Stay tuned for the next installment in this series, which is the top five car camping slash boondocking sites where I camped in my rig for 2019. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Enjoy your holidays everybody. Bye-bye.